Good afternoon. How are you doing? Had a great lunch? Great. Well, my name is Mike Bowman, and I'm going to talk about how to use Hadoop for solving the big data of security problem we have. The thing is that you hear about a lot of big data, what you can do with big data, and, and the thing is what we're having now, today, is uh, big data in, in security. We have uh, log files in terabytes, network traffic. I mean, a, a standard desktop is one terabyte disk space, even if you're doing computer forensics. And not talk about malware, that's an insane amount of data. And that's where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from a big data, uh, I'm doing Hadoop and let's see what I can do with security. I'm a malware analysis as a hobby, hobbyist. I was here in 2012 and talked about my three computers under the stairs in my house doing malware analysis as a hobby. And it's been progressing from that, where I'm um, also spoke about how to do it cheaply and how to make use of the data. The thing is, from 2012 to now, my malware collection has grown really big. And my three computers under the, bed, under the stairs is not really cutting it. because I'm going to go, like, collect all the malware. And it's a lot. This is just one of my sources of malware. It's from beginning of 2012 to about now. Anyone can guess how much malware that is from that single source? How many things? One terabyte. Show your hands. I think I can see you. Come on, wake up. No one thinks I have a one terabyte of malware. You think it's too much? Yeah. What? 50. I is not quite that much. I don't have a sand at home. See, I still am under the stairs. <laughs> Although I want to sand, I can't afford it, I can't house it. Why 0.8 terabytes of disk space for the, from this single source? I have 20 other sources. Now, if you look at the releases, you have one here, 18th of July, 45, almost 46 gigabytes. Three days later, another one, 25 gigabytes. You can't download them fast enough, let alone analyzing them. It's over 100,000 samples in each of these packs. I mean, how do I, can, how can I keep up? Well, I can't, I need, I need reinforcement, I need help. More in, in more ways than one. So, I'm looking at this, this is a big data problem. What can I do with big data? I'm oh, looking, ah, Hadoop. That's the open source solution for all big data problems. And it's a really, really cool project. It, it's meant to run off off-the-shelf hardware. Now, your normal standard PC that has its faults, the hardware dies, uh, it burns up and it doesn't require any special networks. I have a friend, he's working in the HPC sector. He's uh, talking about his 1920 CPUs um, cluster he just uh, installed. It's like 1920 cores and gigabyte, uh, no, terabytes of RAM and infinity band network and all the things. And it's like, okay, how much does it cost? Uh, 5.6 million. Okay, I come back about 20 years when I've uh, saved all my income and I can start looking at 
getting something like that uh, refurbished. So Hadoop, all standard stuff, all hard, standard hardware. The processing is done locally, and that's an important bit. Because this is a, like the a Hadoop ecosystem. Do you think in the middle, in the circle, are the, the really important stuff? You have the HTFS, the Hadoop Distributed File System. You, if you think about RAID, uh, RAID 5, one cop, uh, well, you put the file in, in, in the hard drives and it's be spread over several hard drives and so on. Well, that is the, it's what Hadoop does, but across machines. So the standard is that it makes three copies. So that piece of data is stored on three machines. Then you have the map reduced. It's the computing power. It's, it's actually quite um, stupid. It is, um, think in, in, in the easiest way, think grep, pipe it to word count. That's map reduce. The map part is the grep. The reduced part is the word count, the WC command. Of course, you can do a lot of things with either part of them, but that is in a nutshell. Then you have all these components around them. For me, I'm using pig most of the time, HBase sometimes, but mostly I'm, I'm not actually Think about it. I'm using pig, I'm using HBase, everything else is magic happening. This is a security talk, it's not a big data talk. How do you get a Hadoop cluster? Well, my recommendation if you're running this at home, get one of those pre packed distributions. Uh, Cloudera has one, Wharton Works has one, there's several others. You can also rent them using the EMR from Amazon. That's really cool, really cost-effective way to do it. Or if you really, really want, you can compile it yourself. Uh, not recommended unless you want to actually improve the Hadoop ecosystem itself. Because if you just want to use it, go for a prepackage or rent it. So let's talk about how I do, how do malware analysis with Hadoop. Well, first, I, I'm using a, a piece of software not developed by me, it's Binary Pig. It has solved a lot of its problems. First of all, malware samples are in, mega, in the size of megabytes. Uh, Hadoop likes them larger. So what, what it does is it's creating a sequence file. It's a, a key value pair. Where the key is the identifier, the, like the MD5 checksum, and the value is the contents of the malware. Because then you have a lot of malware as one single file. Then this files are batch process on each and every node in the Hadoop cluster. They are processed locally, which means that the, uh, the node that does the processing has the data on its own hard drive. So I don't have an additional network I.O. To, uh, to consider. And the output is stored in Elasticsearch for accessing, for more analysis, for drilling down into, to, into results. So what do I do with it? I'm doing uh, extracting resource information, which means I'm, uh, everything that the PES header is telling me, I'm collecting, I'm also collecting all the, the resources, all the icons of the binary. Um, something that's uh, interesting to know that uh, malware developers are as lazy as normal developers. Once they find a good icon set, they will keep it. They will keep using it. 
same thing is um, if once they have found have got uh, OpenSSL or some other third-party library working on their machine, they will keep using that version with those specific changes they made to it. And those things are things we can look for in a, in a sample. And you're also looking at how to improve detection rate. So you, um, I'm using Yara for that. And everything, every time you're doing a, a signature update, you want to see how well it responds. You get any false negatives and the false positives. You actually find what you're looking for. So that's really good to run it and rerun the sample or the sample set. So this is like the, the workflow of Binary Pig. You have a, a zip file or a, a local directory with a lot of malware samples. Malware sample is a malicious file. Those who not, not, don't know. Those, that file is being sequenced and stored in the Hadoop in the cluster, in the HDFS. Once that part is done, I run a bunch of pig jobs for creating hashes, to do claim AB scanning, to do the Jara signature detection, to extract all the strings, the resources, whatever I want. And if I figure out that tomorrow, uh, that piece of information I would like to have. I wrote, write a new pig script that extracts that information for me and rerun the job. With an uh, affinity amount of, uh, of um, uh, nodes, it can be done really, really quickly. But uh, I'm getting back to that later. Next thing you can do with Hadoop is doing network analysis. That one is similar to the, the malware analysis as in you store the pcaps in HDFS and you run a bunch of pig scripts to extract the things you're looking for. So if it's, uh, you want to run snort signatures against the whole lot, you can do that. You can do things like, okay, give me all the traffic that didn't have a sort signature. You can, um, replay the traffic, you can look at artifacts, back and forth. The workflow looks like this. PCAP stored locally, uploaded to HDFS across the nodes. And that circle motion, is representing all the peak jobs that runs on the each individual node. And as I said, it's a POF uh, extra, uh, signature extraction. The, have anyone heard about the POF tool? It's actually looking at uh, all the characteristics of uh, connection to see that, oh, the TTL was default this one. It means that it's probably a Windows machine or a Linux machine or so on, which who is generating the traffic. You get to extract the user agents, uh, whatever you want. I mean, think about the query you're looking for. You can have it. Then you have the computer forensics. And that one is um, more complicated. It's like you're having tons of storage, you have a files and a normal computer, it takes time to do a keyword search. Well, this is a, a multi-port um, process. First you extract all, you take the raw image, extract metadata about the raw image, all the files, uh, both the, about the image itself and the files in the image. You upload that 
and the raw image to HDFS. Then you're processing that data you got into HBA, uh, HBase, it's a NoSQL database. And you do an iteration, uh, you find first all the files, you find the contents of the files, you catalog, uh, uh, categorizing the files, you keyword index the files, and so on. Which means it, it, it doesn't do anything different from the normal sloth kit uh, software, it's just doing it faster as you have more processing power to use with it. And the nice thing is that you just need to have enough storage around the, the whole cluster, not on each machine. So you're extracting uh, keywords, you tokenize the documents, you cluster the similar objects, and you can even compare it to uh, another image so if you have a, a plain Windows image, you can remove all those files from the, the investigation. And then you have the extraction point where you're actually building a report of all the data you got out. So that's really cool. Then we got back to the log analysis. This is the, the basic example. If you, if you look at how to write a map reduce job, they always have the example of doing log analysis, usually Apache logs. Uh, doing a pure map produce job for this is okay. It's a bit more work than writing a, a pig script for it, which is an overlay over map produce jobs. <clears throat> it's like writing C instead of assembler. So the workflow with when you're doing large scale. Um, Log analysis is that you're using Flume, which is another of those uh, data acquisition components. Um, they push the local logs to HDFS and normalize them. Then you have pig scripts that uh, is, 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 all this is batch processing. So you have a batch that uh, using uh, pig scripts to either directly look for bad stuff or populate the HBase database. <clears throat> because once you have a, a, the data in HBase, you can start querying that one for more information. It's like you, you, you grab, you pipe it to a file and then you start looking at that file for more information. And um, this uh, log pig has a restful um, service for uh, data extraction from the Hadoop, so you can actually start using the data in your normal UIs or CIs. So here's comes the animation again. It's quite standard. So Flume push the logs to HDFS. HDFS is spreading it across the computers. You have a pig scripts that extract the data and, and put them back either in a, back to HDFS or in HBase. And then you can create additional pig scripts to extract more information.
So back to my, my little hobby, malware analysis. As I said, uh, I have my three computers under the stairs, like Harry Potter. And uh, I'm storing my samples locally. What I need to do is, I, I, my three nodes at home, they, they don't cut it. It's not enough computing power. I can't keep up. So what I'm doing is I'm um, loading the data I'm interested to analyze up to S3, the Amazon Web Service, simple storage service. Then I'm using uh, Elastic MapReduce Amazon to run binary pig and extract all the data. And then I pull the results back locally. The reason for I do this is Although S3 is cheap to store data, when you're talking about terabytes of storage, it's no longer cheap. You mean you're talking about hundreds of dollars per month. So this is said, my hobby, so I, I need to be cost effective and time effective and everything. So data is being backed up on Amazon Glacier. Uh, anyone heard about that one? Uh, a few hands. It's their um, long time storage uh, solution. You upload it, it's stored on very cheap uh, storage. So you, uh, you, if you want it back, you, don't, you can't be in a hurry, it will take time, but you don't lose it at least. I'm also doing, uh, using the less uh, re reduced redundancy storage of S3. So I only have a .99 and not dot nine nines. Because I figure, it's going to be up there. I have a local copy. It's going to be up there for an hour or two. Uh, it shaves off the cost. The third thing I do is I bid on uh, Amazon EC2 spots, which means that Amazon is um, having this market where you can buy unused computing power and, and it's, it's a market, highest price winning wins. And you can get the computing power very cheaply. Although if someone bids higher than you, they just turn off your machine. But that's not a problem because Hadoop is built to actually be aware of that. And it's actually better if they do turn it off before the full hour because if they terminate your machine, before the full hour of machine uh, time is used, they build you nothing. <laughs> and it, uh, Hadoop is doing um, incremental saves. So I can, uh, if I bid low enough, I get it f done fast enough and very, very cheaply. But if, if um, time is more important than money, either you can uh, buy um, your, your on-demand uh, instances, which means you pay retail price or just bid a very high price. And this, the thing is the bid price is, is the maximum you're willing to pay, not what you are paying. So if, if you can, um, if you bid like uh, five cents an hour and, you can, and the spot price is 1.1 cents an hour, you, you're just paying 1.1 cents. And this is um, getting down to about, I estimate about $20 a month. I haven't, I haven't got my first bill yet um, because this is, is, a, is a work in progress. During the summer, my, uh, the storage node on my home computer, it crashed. I lost half my hard drives and all my malware, so I'm in the process of rebuilding my 
my archive. So this is how I'm doing it going forward. So conclusions. Malware analysis, it's uh, really appropriate for this kind of setup. You can do it very quickly, very cheaply. And um, if you figure out a new way to uh, extract data or find a new piece of data you want, you can rerun your whole sample collection in hours. Or if your credit limit is big enough, you can run it in one hour and a lot of machines at Amazon. I mean, you could run the whole archive, the 5.8 ter uh, terabyte of malware in just under an hour, but you I mean you're paying for it. <laughs> but it's, it's cheap. You can do it for network analysis. And if you, if you are recording all the traffic, dump it to, to um, HDFS, you can start rerunning samples. You can um, develop your own signatures. It's like um, you have, a, you, you find an exploit or, or malicious network pattern and you write your snort signature you can run that snort signature again at all the traffic already collected and see if you got any false positives or if there are any other machines that has been attacked. Same thing with the computer forensics. Uh, and here I think Hadoop is a really good tool because you don't need 10 terabytes of disk space in each and every node. I mean, you can have 500 gigabytes of disk space provided you have enough nodes. Because uh, the, you, you, the, the capacity of HDFS is the disk space across all your nodes divided by three. As you have, you're storing as the same data three times over the cluster. And for a log analysis, this is the newest part of my ecosystem, and I'm already seeing benefits of it, especially when uh, you're talking in, taking in logs from the um, dynamic analysis of malware binaries, the, all the system calls. Next step is to actually create um, uh, computer learning algorithms to uh, to help me detect bad stuff. <laughs>